I know no one likes to have these, well, before this, before we begin the guides talk. But first of all, there'll be a lot of speed ups in this video. Uh, so be aware of that. If that can trigger some sort of illness for you, be aware of that. And second, sorry for this taking so long. And watch out for this quest if you haven't done it, which is on Watatsumi Island. This is a previous quest before we unlock Inconomia. So I'll do it right now just in case some people haven't finished it. But if you don't need this, feel free to skip to the timestamp where we start the, of the uh, official uh, Inconomia unlocking quest. But once you have reached the area, interact with the stone tablet that's right next to the shrine. And it will lead you to these elemental particles areas where you need to hit it with the elemental skill. And it will be easy to see under elemental vision. I know that's a lot of elemental. Either way, once you have interacted with these particles, all three of them, you don't have to defeat the enemies, just ignore them. And when you go back to the shrine, it should be unlocked to you, and your first mission item should be unlocked for you. Okay, that is one. We got a few more spots near here and here, I do believe. That is the two that we'll have to go. Was there more than. Yes, there's a few more. And there's one more there. Cool. And this first one we're going to, I do believe, um, is another lock shrine. And its instruction is to defend this spot. And by defeating enemies, the counter will go down in terms of time. And once you have cleared out all the time requirements by defeating enemies, then this shrine is unlocked so you can get your second item. And then for the third, you have to teleport back to this same teleportation waypoint and head your way over. It's really, really near us. As you can see, it's right over there. This one is actually a smaller puzzle. All you want to do is um, you turn the mechanism to all point towards the center, then lock them into position and the puzzle will solve for you. Now is the third, got a fourth one over here. Let me get rid of them. Now all we have to do is read the tablet once again. This way it doesn't give you a really easy clue. But now, all you have to do is pick up this and walk along the stone statues and little spark chapman and then once they have all done, then the shrine will unlock for you. Now you need to clear out all these for two agents nearby. Once you have defeated the Fatui agents, make sure you come back and pick up the last piece. And now, it's time to head back towards the Sanganomiya shrine and talk to the same maiden that now she has relocated here. Once you have finished uh, the dialogue with her, now you teleport here and then follow where I am going then this is where we will be using all the mission items we have collected for the previous spots. Inside here a similar puzzle will also appear uh, with another electroculus near here uh, but don't forget back here is a hidden chest, don't forget about this chest and then after you have grabbed this chest proceed to unlocking all these puzzles it's the same and you can actually lock them in position once you have finished the puzzle pointing all the fish tail towards the center but this time around enemies will spawn so prepare for battle
But you cannot use it on PC, which is a... You not have a connected account with this, with this one. Once you have at least finished the first Suyoko quest from Sangonomiya Shrine, and now you teleport back to the same location and talk to her once again. Now the Economia story quest should begin as long as you have completed this quest. Um, and now, this quest also begins to tell you the importance of key sigils. Key sigils are throughout the entire Economia quest and they are extremely important, so be aware, be aware of that. And now after the dialogue, our mission is to collect more key sigils and unlock the mechanism that allows us to enter Economia. And now, once again, we'll go back to the same cave that we were in earlier. Um, if you don't know the cave we're talking about, just follow where we're going. Inside you should see for two agents, but you don't really have to defeat them, but if you feel like it, you can also do so. Now, after you have came here, once again it's the same deal, you can pick up the key sigil without defeating the enemies and decide to leave, it's down to you. And once you have collected all these key sigils, now it's time for us to unlock the seal to open up to Enconomia. And this is where the two remaining seals are on the map, it should be pretty clear, all you have to do is coming over, do not do what I did here, I interacted with it and investigated, all you have to do is insert the key sigil you do not have to investigate. After you have done all the key sigil locations, once again teleport back to Sangonomiya Shrine and interact with Tsuyoko once again. And now she will just tell you, oh yeah, just jump straight down and Economia's entrance is right below us. As all of us has speculated what this does and now we've finally got an answer. It's the gateway to leading us towards Economia. All you have to do is jump down, to don't worry about anything, just plunge attack it in and everything's all good. Once you have entered it, and it's a complete new area, new region, do remember to interact with the first teleportation waypoint just so it's easier for you to interact with. On the map, it will be completely listed as a separate region other than uh, the other areas of the map. This is very important. Uh, people, make sure you collect a few of these before you go into Economia. Eight. Barely enough. We won't be getting Kokomi, so I mean, that's why I didn't get any. But these Sangopo pearls will be used later on in the story quest. At least grab nine of them. I do not want to fish now. Thank you. But before we get inside, there is a lot can be done here. And now let's begin our entire exploration of Enconomia, and here we start off in the entrance area of all the chest collections in this area. And first of all is defeating the enemies here. Also in Enconomia, enemies are really really hard, since I'm doing this with a no wishing account, things are very very difficult for me. So if you really need food, do not be ashamed of it, because these enemies are really really tough, you'll be seeing hordes of rune guards etc once you have entered Enconomia properly, so be prepared once you come in. Now we go back to the teleportation waypoint we just unlocked, and head towards the left side, you should see this waterfall in front of you, climb upward towards the left side. And then, in front of you should be a slime guarded chest, this is not the only slime, it kind of baits you to think it's easy, but there will be much more slimes spawning after this. Once you have defeated all of them, the chest will unlock, and this chest is yours. Now, up next, you should see, going back towards where, before we climb up the waterfall, there's this time challenge, right in front of you. Now just follow along the particles slowly but gradually, making sure in, well, you climb up slowly. You have plenty of time, making sure you can make this jump easily. And now, after all 8 particles, the chest is yours. Now coming over to here, you want to aim towards over there, you should have already seen those 4 electro podiums. All you have to do is grab an electro character, unlock them in quick succession, or else this will not be unlocked and this chest is yours. Now turn towards this direction, you should see this ring guard just right here. Right, after defeating him, this common chest is yours. Advance inward towards 
this direction on the map and before you climb up here there's a little tiny cave inside there's a silly hidden inside just waiting for us to follow it once we follow it to its final location and then you should see these two enemies after clearing them out this common chest is also yours Now prepare to swap out a archer character, well because I only have amber, I'll have to use amber here. But this is also the part where we start to solve the key sigils to unlock the gate towards Enconomia. But here is your shooting challenge. After shooting all these well, ice barrels, here's your common chest. Coming upward, I recommend opening up this teleportation waypoint and then Padma will start talking to us about finding a method to head inside but before we do so, head downward from there Coming down here you see another silly, just follow it, same deal Coming over here, prepare pyro characters because these, these are, well, cryo specters and also the first key sigil location you can interact with is right here All you have to do right now is clear out all the cryo specters and there's your next chest before we do anything else, we'll come over towards here, prepare a non-pyro character, start defeating the pyro specters, and now that common chest is yours. Before you do anything, head towards this direction, another key sigil location is right here. Now follow where I'm going, back towards where we came from, but behind this rock, we keep heading towards this direction. A really sneaky location to hide another key sigil location. This is the third key sigil location you need to activate. Coming over here is a time trial. Feel free to just start the trial without defeating the slimes. Slimes is not important. Now, once again, just follow where I'm going. But then, before during this challenge, you can also en enable the fourth key sigil location. Don't worry, you'll have plenty of time as long as you have a character that can help you with sprints. Of course, well, for my account, I couldn't even assemble a double Nemo team. That should be much easier for you. At the end point is another chest for you. Once you open it up, climb towards the right side upward. Follow the ledge. You, as you have seen, that's the last key switcher location. Before you do anything, turn backward here. Follow where I'm going. Another electropodium puzzle that you need to solve. Okay, now we have collected all the key sigil locations and all the chests before we enter Enconomia's gate. Now teleport back towards the massive gate here. Now we can interact with the mechanism that's right here after you have unlocked and investigated, activated all five key sigils, no matter what you call that. But this, this is actually one of the coolest thing in Enconomia designs. You cannot see the hidden entrance unless you pass through the main door and that is incredibly cool. No matter how, uh, before you enter the gate, you will not see the hidden passage. Just have a look. You can only see through. There's no way to see the passage unless you pass through the main door. BS aside, let's continue investigating and collecting chests. Now head inward, as you can already see this chest is guarded by enemies, clear out the enemies and this chest is yours. Right, keep going forward, pay attention to your right side and there's a little area you can enter and clearly you would have seen this time trial. And this time trial isn't particularly hard, but just be aware of the enemies on the higher floor. You can ignore them, just like what I do here, but just be careful with them. Once you're finished, you're probably already seeing the silly at the corner of the room. Now, following it towards its end goal, another chest will be yours. Continue advancing deeper, there's a silly on our top left. But first of all, we defeat these slimes guarding this chest. And now let's make our way upward to follow that silly we just seen a moment ago. Right. 
Right, that's pretty simple. Now climb out the wall you came in from and turn towards the right side, make a U-turn, and then enemies guarding another common chest. I know how painful it is to defeat these enemies, but you have to do what you have to do. After clearing them out, here's your next chest. Now we have to do a progress check. Up to this point, you should have 4 series, 19 chests at least. Now we can continue onward to open up Economia's real areas. Right, prepare characters that can help you glide, use the inner zoomers, um, well, gadget, all that will help you from getting from the teleportation waypoint towards the main islands of Enconomia. The first chest is right ahead of you, these enemies. And just a quick heads up, I will not be collecting some of the chests on the way because then later on we do it systematically. Um, well, first of all, we'll figure out how to get ourselves sorted on all the world quests in Enconomia, and then we will also collect all the key sigils before we can initiate the getting all the chests because if you are just backtracking in between locations trying to get key sigils and using key sigils to unlock chests for you that's really really annoying so currently speaking we just run the map go and focus on the story quest achievements that you need to unlock first of all the day night cycle change of Enconomia second how uh, you can travel along Enconomia with all the teleportation waypoints that is the main focus right now once you have done so since by default when we have entered Enconomia is a date mode then this can be interacted with inside will be an NPC all you have to do is interact with him and the main story quest for Enconomia should begin Once you finish the dialogues, now here is a map of Enconomia. This is how we unlock the map for Enconomia. All we have to do is come over here and interact with the map that's on the wall. And now he'll tell you to go and search for this thing to allow us to enter the center areas of Enconomia, which is very, very important. Okay, now I just follow where I'm going right now. Once again, we'll be starting to collect teleportation waypoints and feel free to, well, I still recommend you follow what I do here, um, which is collect all the teleportation waypoints before, you, before we start to systematically collect all the key sigils and all the chests. Because all else things will get really, really complicated since Enconomy is such a huge region with very, very complex terrain. Now, since we need to continue with the main story quest, let's head towards this side. After you have reached the destination, this is the first puzzling, one of the first puzzling for Enconomia. You will see these podiums that you can interact with just by hitting them when you're nearby. That unlocks the gates for us. That is the first lessons of how to unlock some of the puzzles in Enconomia. Inside this chest is essential to collect because of story reasons. Now feel free to teleport backward to interact with the NPC once again. And then we can proceed with the main story after that. Now we head towards the main objectives, but upcoming there's a few chests I recommend you getting because I made a mistake by not planning this. First of all, is this time trial, you can start doing it since we're already on the way. Doing this does not affect the later on map plannings on collecting chests. And now is these abyss mages, feel free to kill them, but uh, well it's too hard for me. And then here, I love the teleportation waypoint, here's a city towards on the right side, make sure you interact with him because the direction you're heading is exactly the same where he's going. So, you could have used that opportunity to get that extra chest. Now just keep following how I'm going towards this direction. There's this first key sigil at a really weird location. So let's just collect that. And that is our first key sigil. 
we'll be collecting a lot and a lot of key sigils um, in the upcoming parts just because they are also linked to 100% the map they're linked to a lot of the main story quests of Enconomia now right here is one of the same mechanisms you can interact with and then you'll see these bubbles behind you all you have to do is jump towards it and open up your wind glider and then we should slowly carry you upward and here is our second key sigil we can collect during this and then also this can carry us all the way upward That's your which next is sigil. very very well lucky because we also need to head upward to unlock this teleportation waypoint which saves us the issues of climbing and we head towards this huge structure in hand Up here, unlock the waypoint. Also have to unlock those two. They didn't design this really nicely, to be honest. Yeah, once you have done so, just teleport back to this waypoint right here. You can ignore the main objective on the map right here because it doesn't matter as long as you proceed towards the main direction of the story because at its end goal, you'll always meet up with that NPC anyway. He's already there waiting for us. After the story cutscene, this area should be opened up for us. Don't forget to grab that teleportation waypoint and we'll proceed further on. Another waypoint right here, don't forget to grab it. Up here this time trial, feel free to do it because it's the same direction as our main story quest anyway. Don't mess up like me. But here is also another teleportation waypoint and the last particle. Collect that, then the chest is yours and head towards the center of the structure. Now we unlock the most crucial mechanic in this entire Enconomia area. Okay, so now it will tell us to go and collect three different pieces which is over here over here and over here that's also why the reason we need to unlock all this waypoint previously before we do anything now your mission quest should be updated uh, if you want hints it should be on your mission well guidebook etc but before that we unlock this waypoint and teleport to it it doesn't actually teleport you exactly to the waypoint it teleports you on top of the pillar so it gives you enough altitude it gives you enough height to fly over towards this island and here is your next teleportation waypoint and now we proceed to unlock the other waypoints on this island Here we can teleport and save us a little bit of time. Right, that's so far all the teleportation waypoints other than the three hidden ones. Right, now let's get back on to the quest. Here you will see this quest and choose the closest and we do it one by one here I decided to grab our third key sigil well, uh, well because it's a really awkward location but once you come in here there should be these three investigation points on the floor I probably missed one here behind the gate which is weird I didn't see a prompt but once you have done so, head towards where the mission mark is. There'll be few enemies you have to defeat. Once you have defeated them, then interact with this. Make sure you're under night mode. I repeat, night mode. 
And then once you come in here, this puzzle, I'll just tell you the quickest manner of unlocking it. Use this, interact with that on the right side, and then now interact with this on the left side. And then now, I do believe you need to turn into day mode. Now, you have, you see this thing we can interact with can only be interacted on the daytime. So just keep hitting it, hit it three times. That's the second time. Hit it the third time. And now we interact with this right here. And the puzzle is solved. Not too bad, is it? Once you have come up here, prepare for a big fight. There's Rip Hounds there we need to defeat. Once defeating them, this chest will be yours. And this chest cannot be avoided because it's a quest chest. And then outside of this window that's now opened up is the silly you want to follow. Well, once you have done so, let's teleport over to here. This puzzle can only be operated underneath nighttime, and as well, the day night cycle swap locations I really recommend. Here inside is one of these cracked stone chests, they have a lot more inside, I do recommend opening them whenever. Now, following the silly, and I recommend climbing from the corner because if you just climb straight up, it always blocks you. Once you climb up, in this room, on the top right corner is another key sigil I forgot to collect uh, on the first go, so please do collect it. And on the left side is this shiny tree thing, shiny blue tree thing, you have to collect it and come here, change it to daytime. And this allows you to interact with a nighttime mechanism even though you're in daytime. Then now coming over here, this broken statue can be interacted with, with because you have collected that blue shiny tree thingy, magical tree thingy, I do not know what's the official name for it. Either way, that chest is yours, and continue following the silly, and this should open up a secret passage for you, then follow itself to the finishing line, and that's another chest for you. And that's also one of the key um, fragments that you need in order to complete the main story quest for Economia. Now we have to teleport towards the Serpent's Heart area, and turn your um, day-night cycle to nighttime. Yeah, and this area, oh my. Is one of the most complicated areas and since there's how much content in Economia alone it took me a long 10 hour stream to get Economia stuff done which is very very long and here we are but once you turn into nighttime let's finish this puzzle first you have to come to the center of the this whole area that just follow the dots number one is the first gate you want to interact with number two is the second gate etc and this is not the only time we'll be using this. There will be a lot more spread around Economia later on we'll be exploring. So please do watch till the end because there's a lot, a lot more that has came up. And now after collecting that chest, we can go back to the actual um, mechanism that allows us to change the night cycle, the higher structure or whatever. It's too hard for me to pronounce that name. And all we have to do is go back and talk to Aru and the main story quest will proceed. For spoiler reasons, I'll not talk too much about this. All you have to do is finish his dialogue and this underground basement area should unlock for you. And once you drop down, there's a semi-small boss fight. Once you defeat the enemy, collect the required mission item. And then after that, all you have to do is return to Watatsumi Island and talk to Tsuyoko about the events happened. And right after that, um, do feel free to freely explore Economia from that point onward. But I still recommend you follow what I do right here. Which is, I collect all the key sigils first, then systematically go through all the chests and all the achievements. Now, right, let's go back to Watatsumi Island, talk to the Tsuyoko, then we can finish the story quest, get our precious Primo gems. 
and then dip out. Uh, let's go and finish some of the main world quest in Economia. First of all, teleport back to the Narrows where we first of all met Angel. And then, once we teleport backward, we we'll once again, once again go back to the library where we open up the map. And there will be now a ghost, making sure you're on the night time. As long as you follow what I did here, I haven't swapped the day night cycle at all. And as long as you're in night time, all the NPCs should spawn in the overworld for you. This first quest is quite tricky. Once you interact with, I do believe it's a her, I cannot assume, because from name it's kind of hard to figure out. But she wants you to return all five missing books that's overdue um, in her time but before that don't forget to collect that key schedule on the second floor of the library and these five books are very very hard to get it's almost near impossible to figure that out by yourself a lot of the things is so hidden that I recommend you just keep following what I do here and I'll be going through every single bit of the details of how to finish all these world quests so first of all Let's teleport to this location right here. After teleporting to this waypoint, now up next we need to fly towards this mission marker area. Feel f well, beware of to not fall too much because this is still a quite the high area underneath the map and there's no other way of getting here. Underneath here is a few NPCs that's trapped here, the prisoners, and talk to them, listen to their stories, and there's this guy called Anti, that he has the book, Anti, or whatever, I don't know how to pronounce the name. Either way, you teleport to the lower parts of the Serpent's Heart area, are you happy now we opened up the teleportation waypoints? Either way, this guy is actually the biggest chat I've seen. He said he just ripped out the Ring God's core, by hands and disabled it and hidden one of the books we need to return underneath it. Now grab the core for the rune guard and just stuff it back in and then you can feel free to defeat the rune guard or not but now the book should be allowed to be interacted with and just grab the item and dip out if that's what you wanted. Now in the same, now in the same area you still have to go back to talk to him just to finish his quest which also reveals a lot more about economic story so if you are a well a genshin theory crafter archaeologist whatever you call yourself feel free to read on it's quite interesting a lot of the economic stories it reveals a lot about the entire uh, history now let's get on with the next part now we should need to teleport up to the Evernight Temple, top right teleportation waypoint. And here you'll see this massive maze. I'll show you the easiest way to get inside. But before that, let's just observe. Oh yeah, we have a key schedule right here. And these mechanisms can only be interacted under daytime, so we have to do so. Daytime also allows us to grab the key schedule. But before that, we hit the right side mechanism once and the center of the maze would rotate once and leave it there. We'll collect the key schedule and go to the left side of the mechanism and hit it once. The bigger part of the maze will rotate once. And now that is ready for us. All we have to do is turn back to, to nighttime. As simple as that. No hassle, no nothing, but prepare for a hydro character there is these four hydropodiums we will need to interact with at these few corners of the maze. Now we have to go inside and interact with. So, well, if you have to tag here, hey, this is your lucky day. But if it doesn't work, well, Barbara also works as well. I won't recommend Shincho just because his hydro application is, well, he's, it's good. But you will need to use skills, which is a annoying part. Just follow what I do here and use Hydro Character to hit all the four podiums and the center gate will open for you, luxurious chest. Ooh, woo and here is an NPC you need to interact with. He will tell you he's proud of you solving his first puzzle but he has another one somewhere, he's giving you a key. Once you complete both of these puzzles then you're allowed to enter to the same basement behind him. That basement also includes one of the books we need to collect for the librarian, so we will need to do so. So teleport to the Serpent's Heart area, the teleportation waypoint. Then this is where you use the key for. Underneath this puzzle, I will also need to explain it to you. Just wait for me to explain it. 
Down here we need to align all the gates symmetrical on the night time so a uh, deposit will be unlocked for us. But first of all we need to op open up all these areas, uh, these center gates to allow all the gates to align first on one side just so that's easier for us to uh, well, check which locations we need them to be in. You see on the night time these walls will exist but on the daytime they won't. But here the controlling mechanism is also underneath daytime so just follow what I do here and it's not too hard okay. If you don't want to hear my explanation just follow what I do here first we'll turn to daytime. And then now I chose this side because it's easier. I just align all the gates to the same location. And then now they are all aligned on one side. And now it's easier to control them. So all you have to do, you see, because they, whenever you interact with it, all of them, all of the gates will move towards the directions. And that is very easy for us to interact with because they cannot move once you have the center gates locked up. So all you have to do is remember the night mode uh, locations of the walls and then just place them accordingly just so all the gates are symmetrical. Right, now in the night time we can once again check these invisible gates locations that we were not able to have. Uh, the right side will have the furthest right side of the door blocked and then on the left side is the closest gate to us which is present. So all we have to do is align some of the gates towards the right side, some of the gates towards the left side. The center gate stays untouched. And that is as simple as that. So now we go into daytime, align the gates towards right side and left side first. Here, we move all the gates all to the right side and the first gate to the right does not need to be moved. So we shut the center gate so it cannot be moved. And then on this side, we do not shut this because we will need it. And this is the wrong example, okay? So do not shut it. And we move the gate all the way to the end. Then we shut the gate so it's not being moved. That last step, we move the center gate at the center and under, ni under night mode, it will be all symmetrical. Now this luxurious chest is yours and which is also a part of the story quest um, chests that you need to complete. Now once you have done so, feel free to go back to the maze area to talk to the same NPC and use the newly gained, I don't know even what, what you call it, I guess mission item. Then you just go back to the basement of the maze, talk to the NPC, he'll be really really pleased that you solved both of these puzzles. And then now you can unlock the basement area. Inside this chest contains one of the books we need to return to the librarian. And also on the left side is a key sigil we can collect right now, right here. Well, what's your opinion on Kanamiya so far? There's so much to be done, there's so much puzzle. Well, do feel free to let me know how you think of Kanamiya's design, explorations, and all that. But right now, let's push onward with the next part of collecting books. This area is actually quite hidden. It's not on the map. It's like one of those monster hidden hidden island situations. This island off the off the coast is not shown on the map at all, but is also where one of the books is at. Uh, I do recommend teleport up here because you have more altitude to fly over, but I just use that as an example to tell you where the island is at. Now, right now, let's start heading our way towards there.
before you get there, you might think, how do we get over there? Because it's near impossible to fly over and climb up. And there's a different way. You see this little island in front of us? First of all, there's a enemy guarded chest and a silly on the right side of the pillar. These are two locations that is a little bit hard to plan. Uh, there's an easier method to get the silly, but I kind of screwed up on that. But before that, you can always come here because on the way is this enemy guarding chest. Defeating the enemies makes sure that this chest is yours. Because I know all of you wouldn't give up a easy chance for Primo gems, would you? Either way, well, prepare yourselves. Um, some teleportation waypoints. Well, portable waypoints because it will come necessary later on. Um, I'm sorry I didn't mention this earlier, but it will be quite important. Um, first of all, let's head towards here. It's this little bubble thing. It will help you to teleport your way towards the island. And this is one of the hidden areas that you can collect items from. And I mean, it's not a lot of resources, it's not a lot of rewards, but it also still counts towards the exploration of Economia. But inside, once you talk to the NPC, once you bamboozled him, make him think that you're one of the superiors, inside just use these uh, podiums to unlock these gates. Inside should be the serpents, or whatever you call them, bishops. Defeat them. On the first gate to the left side is your third book that you need to collect. Inside, after that, the other two gates have some minor resources that you can collect. Feel free to do some, do them or not, but the left side one is essential because there is a key sigil inside. But other than that, well, feel free to, you know, kill these servants or not. They are quite tanky, not gonna lie. I don't know why Mahoyo keeps designing these enemies that's like extremely tanky because using these no wishing accounts doing, well, Explorations is nearly impossible by my, by my perspective right now. Just imagine Sumeru in the future. But yeah, Sumeru in the future, lads. Like, I will still be doing guides, I bet. Either way, now, after you have defeated the bishops, come upward, keep heading towards this direction. There's more exploration to be done. Yeah, once again, don't forget these stone chests, cracked stone chests. They give quite a lot of mora. They do stack up quite fast in terms of mora. And on the left side here will be one of the puzzles we need to solve with key sigils but right now we do not have enough uh, you will see me place a teleportation waypoint for this but um, uh, luckily the one of the key sigils on this island can help us unlock it so feel free to not waste your teleportation waypoint here uh, like what I did here Yes indeed, after grabbing that key sigil, uh, we can also unlock this puzzle right here. Behind here is a day night cycle changer. Change it, then we can once again interact with one of those cracked stone chests inside this area. Because, well, more is worth it. Amen. But yeah, but don't forget to change it back to nighttime once you have done so. It's quite important. Or else you will not be able to use your key sigils on that one key sigil location that we were at. Because you know how I dumbly placed a teleportation waypoint, I just used it to teleport my way back. But yeah, here it is. Just use your key sigils. Yeah, there you go. Now we teleport back our way towards the center of Enconomia here. I'm just gonna start, keep calling it a center because I cannot be bothered to remember its name. But here, starting from the center teleportation waypoint, you want to turn towards the right side. Follow where I'm going. Drop down here. I do believe is the hidden room I want to enter. Um, let's check. Oh yeah, here. Ring guard. This is the symbol for it. All you have to do here. Let them, let them waking up. Now use the explosive barrels for this. The explosions from the barrels also reveals this hidden passage. Inside is once again one of these puzzles, but this can only be done under daytime. So, first of all, we use the nighttime to unlock this gate just so we don't run double, uh, we won't need to change the day night cycle twice. And the closest location is right behind of us. 
coming towards this direction, interact with it, and then we are now in daytime. Head back towards that hidden room and interact with uh, what we have there. And inside is one of those maps that you have to record. You remember the puzzling in at the center of Serpent's Heart. That is the pattern we need to remember. And once again, this we have to go back into nighttime. Unfortunately, because not on the nighttime, this will not showcase for us. And you have to do the same once again, change it back to nighttime and come back. But since we're already here and we're on the night time, we might as well get this time challenge done. On the night time, this time challenge is pretty much a piece of cake. All you have to do is collect all the particles since you have this invisible wall beneath you. This makes it extra easy. Once you have done so, climb your way back up to that hidden room that we were in earlier. So if you remember the serpent's heart puzzles, you have to remember the patterns from number sequence. Well, you can either remember it off by heart or just do what I do. I usually just take out my phone. Um, uh, well, camera could help as well. But I just take out my phone, take a quick picture. Then uh, when you reach there, do not read the patterns that on the floor. But instead, enter the sequence that's on the wall here. But do not try to just go and start inputting the sequence. Since you see the sequence here I have on the video Because I've tried If it's not activated Even if your sequence is correct It will not register Because your first part The wall is not being activated So your puzzle will not solve Yeah, climbing up here As you can see uh, You can use a hydro character To unlock a hidden entrance And just another cracked stone chest for more Mora Here it is We teleport to Serpent's Heart And I'll demonstrate it once you have activated one of those walls, now coming over here and just enter by the sequence. Now we would have collected four out of five books. The last book is not obtainable within Ankonomia. Now, we go to Inazuma, teleport to this waypoint. Pay a visit to Yai's workshop. We will talk to him, we're looking to buy some books, then here, this is the book we need to buy. The Serpent and Drakes of um, Tokoyo Koku. Here it is. Then you buy it. Now, all we have to do is go back to Economia. Give all these five books to the guy. At the beginning of the mission storyline. Now we've collected all the five books, all we have to do is once again head back into the library. Um, I do have to remind you, you have to do this underneath night mode. Uh, night time, and then uh, once you have came in here and talk once again to the NPC and return, well, finish the dialogues, that what you have to do is come to this area of the library and return all the books, return all the lost books. Then, this mirror would open up. It's a exact same library but in a mirror dimension once you go inside you can find well virtual achievements the real copies of the books you just returned and then also including a silly that's inside to follow to the outside and get another chest underneath here is also a luxurious chest just follow where i go and inside is also a key sigil do not miss that one out i probably did not get it on the recording right here but eventually i should come back for it uh, you can either grab it now or follow when i came back and grabbed all those key sigils <laughs> Of 
Okay, now let's teleport our way to the Serpent's Hot area. And there's this one NPC you've probably already seen on the map when you interact with him or her, oh, not too sure. And get the quest started. This is one of the most important quests in Economia, which unlocks the rest three teleportation waypoints. I'm just going to skip the dialogue for you. After the cutscene, now on the map are three newly opened regions that you can, well not a region but a tiny islands that you can um, go and visit and they each are representing one of the trials that NPC wants you to complete. And you can enter through these areas on the map, it is kind of niche, kind of hard to find but just follow me, we'll go through every single quest. Now we begin uh, exploring in the Narrows first because this is very important that we have to uh, start from the beginning to the end I like to get this organized but here it is first of all if you turn back around aiming towards this direction you should see a key sigil right above of us and feel free to grab it and we're starting to collect all the key sigils from this moment onward because then we would be needing them to either finish the trials, finish the world quest and everything now follow where I'm going next, first of all you'd want to um, start off from here. Drop down right behind of us is the second key sigil and now we once again teleport our way back up and drop down below because this foyer is much faster you could have spent your time around the area and look for an entrance and never find it so this is the most recommended route in order to get underneath the serpent's heart uh, dungeon area which is right underneath and here you, you want to exactly follow where I'm flying this is quite a tricky area you see the door on our left I just had a glimpse of it which is one of those puzzles that requires a lot of key schedules to fix to open up so this is the reason why I want to collect the key schedules first because they are included in many many puzzles here again you will see another one of these walls with the symbols you, you can well, remember record and we once again want to enter on the chamber above above of us uh, at the serpent's heart teleportation waypoint take a picture picture of it and don't forget this once again only enter with the sequence that you now see on the wall but before that i decided to do this time challenge right here since we're already here it's quite convenient just so we can do this right here right now sometimes this the circle is a little bit hard to reach so make sure you have enough height and fly towards the center of it or else sometimes it just doesn't get your character there. You don't have to rush it, you can see I already failed once and I still had enough time to do it. Now we teleport back to the Serpent's Heart uh, chamber and start entering the sequence we just got there. You want to do uh, this one as fast as possible because this one is linked to a world quest uh, and that is a two day, uh, two, two day long quest uh, which you want to prioritize. Once you finish up um, the right sequence, this NPC should spawn. You finish the dialogue with him and he will say he doesn't remember his own name. But nearby this ancient stone tablet will tell us, well, his identity. And then we just go in and talk to him once again. Then he will reveal he is one of the mentors of uh, the pretty much the area in Konomius. Um Pretty much he was one of the rebels who wanted to start a rebellion against... Well, the rulers. Pretty much then, now we want to head towards here and find his pupils. But now we need to change the time to day mode because we haven't solved this puzzle just yet. Oh so here is the nearest uh, daytime changer. And just follow where I'm going currently. Yeah, it shouldn't be too hard. As long as we can actually first of all change the daytime. 
and then we can solve the puzzle. But later after that, we will need to swap back to nighttime. But I do believe there is a day night cycle changer within the secret room we're about to enter. Okay, once you drop down, you should see these three little statues right in front of you, as you probably have already figured it out. All you have to do is hit them, and this one is pretty easy, you don't even have to figure out which locations the lamp needs to rise up or down to, because it will just straight up tell you it's at the right location. So just repeat for the three of them, and once you are inside, because I think I recall correctly, inside is a day night changer you need to interact with, because the uh, Enconomia NPCs will only spawn underneath night times and once you get inside after you change the time uh, unfortunately inside here isn't that many rewards i walk through every single corner of this area looking for rewards but there's straight up nothing other than the quest npc and a chest so forget exploring the corners and just go straight up towards the npc then don't forget to unlock the gate right next to him or well, that gives you an easy exit so you don't have to go back around and this chest doesn't even give you primo gems, is a key to another hidden room. Wow, thanks Mihoyo, I guess we'll just keep going on chasing that. And also, sorry about I'm talking about this really slow. To, in order to make him talk to us, you need to give him the right code, and which is the second option. Once you have done so, this ongoing dialogue will tell you about how he has found this special thing, that it should sell for a lot more and this dragonborn orbs so he called uh, will also needs to be uh, grown from a certain special liquid that we'll be chasing for this liquid and then plant it at a certain spot and we can only check back for this dragonborn fruit after the second day this quest name is i do believe it's called lotus eater uh, don't worry about if you cannot finish this quest on day one because it's meant to be a second day um, only when we actually get the final rewards. Uh, to me, uh, the rewards itself is one of those items you can sell at special stores. Only for 80k Mora, I don't think it's worth it, so I just kept it as a special item. But here, once you teleport to where I teleported, you have to defeat these um, drakes, or what you call bishops. And then inside is the water you need to collect. Once you have done so, you have well, you can go ahead to the mission marker to keep continue on the Lotus Eater quest, which is here by the entrance of Enconomia. All you have to do is remember this huge flower that we did our first ever time challenge, time trial, time challenge on. All you have to do is you'll make your way upward and plant it on the top. As easy as that. Then come back and check on the second day. Now, uh, you still remember that secret key we have got, right? Now we teleport to this teleportation waypoint by the Narrows. Uh, also, this is by far my mistake. If you remember one of the day-night changes nearby, uh, please do change to daytime. But if you don't know where it is, you can also check for a later half of the video where I go and change it. But right now, we're just going to jump down right here, collect this key sigil, and prepare to open up this gate. <laughs> Since I made the mistake of not coming here daytime, if you have done so correctly, that gate right there will not be blocking you. But if you couldn't find a day night changer, uh, and also you follow me all the way here, I apologize. And I used a portable waypoint just to save us a little bit of time. You could choose to not use it, but the nearest day night changer is once again from the narrowest teleportation waypoint in front of us, right here where these hillichels gather. And once you have done so, you return back to the room. Uh, either using the portable waypoint or following how I made it there. And now you will see here, this is missing. Now we need to use one of the night mode uh, energy uh, trees, but we clearly can't. So now we'll have to use the day night changer inside the puzzle in order for us to uh, get the energy inside. But you can see here, this gate is locked. So 
the correct thing is to use the other side and interact with the um, mechanic. Uh, the mechanism, sorry. Uh, under night mode. So all we have to do is use these two day-night changes in order for us to pass through these puzzles. Yep, yeah, we use the one on the left side. Can you just imagine how often we do these and the mobs just like being flashlighted? It's like flashbangs. Every single second. But yeah, all jokes aside, once you have done so, uh, opened up the gate, now we are freely to use the right side day night changer. The ones again allowing us to visit inside the room. I do believe there's also a cracked stone chest inside which gives us even more mora. Uh, also nearby there's also a wall with another one of the serpent's heart uh, puzzles that we have to remember by sequence. But either way, you saw me grab the nighttime energies from the tree. Now we turn it into daytime in order to use it on the gate we couldn't open up earlier. It's right here. Just hit it and the gate should open for us. Here, here inside is another chest. And stop right here uh, if you could uh, right after collecting this chest and turn back. On the wall you're facing should be one of the um, special uh, patterns you need to remember which I'm not sure that I recall correctly. Uh, so you have to just go back and check. It should be right there on the wall uh, or I might have put it on a later half of the video. You can either choose to record it now or not. But now let's teleport up to this teleportation waypoint by the narrows and drop down to collect the next key sigil. Once you collected all the key sigil in Economia, a achievement would uh, unlock for you. So don't worry about uh, knowing how you collected all the key sigils because once you have done so, uh, as long as you follow where I'm going, you should be able to get all of them and get the achievement along the way. Also, this next section will be very, very packed with key sigils. Uh, so please do follow closely to how I'm collecting all these key sigils because there's a lot of speed ups coming. Okay, just on a side note, I really want to talk about this because, well, surprisingly I found out only 2% of you, well, from oh YouTube statistics, God. they might be lying to me, but 2% of people apparently are watching my videos and are subscribers. 2% is a very petty percent, so if you're not subscribed, consider doing so if this video has helped you. And, oh yeah, I'm about to do a QA. Q&A session soon upcoming so feel free to use my link down below tweet me on Twitter or just leave a comment down and making sure well you can ask me any questions about Genshin Impact and all about me because I'm about to do pretty much a huge Q&A session upcoming and hopefully this video hasn't been so b too boring to you it's been an hour um, hopefully this little chat segment can relieve you from this boring ass well six uh, key sigils collection but yeah and also well feel free to drop in any of my streams i'm oh, glad to see you guys there anyway let's continue collecting key sigils and we are also about to head inward to start completing um challenges uh do you still remember those extra waypoints were unlocked yes in those areas we're about to begin We once again teleported back to the top of the Narrows area, but now we need to collect some of the remaining key sigils that are on the map. And well, you see, there's a cracked chest. Once again, I want to collect these things whenever I see them. Because the Morris does add up, I do believe some people were crazy enough to find all the cracked chests. Uh, and this is the key sigil earlier I said uh, you should collect once you're in the mirror dimension. But I forgot, so right now I'm just coming back and collect it. Also, this city should be bug for everyone that's doing 2.4 quest. Once again, when you enter the uh, mirror dimension, you will spawn no matter what, even if you have finished the city, which is quite weird. Don't worry about it if you have already done so on the earlier parts of the video. Now, follow where I'm going, and you should see the next key sigil marked out on the map on top of this tree right here. Once again, from this teleportation waypoint, you want to move towards this direction on the map. Uh, I just ignored it. the enemies. If you feel free to clear them out and grab the chest right now, 
that's also fine, but I would still prefer you to go systematically. After you collect these two key sigils, uh, here's this one puzzle. I mean, you can do it right now because there's such a weird niche area. I would recommend you just clear out this area before uh, progressing. Now changing to nighttime, and um, because later on we'll be using nighttime as well. And inside, you've probably already saw that one chest, but the other door can only be unlocked once you're inside nighttime. And you can also very easily lock yourself inside, so be aware of that. If it doesn't lock yourself inside, use this and exit and head your way over here. Uh, you will see this mechanism once again. Hit it, and one of those bubbles should spawn. Once again, open up your wind glider and feel free to just lift yourself with this and go upward. Next key sigil should be towards our right side once you come up. Okay, ignore the enemies because they're not important right now. Now that should be all the key sigils on the narrow, excluding uh, this portal which links to one of the trial islands. I do believe each trial islands has two extra key sigils. But once you clear out the bishops around, this chest is well be available for you. But this abyss decided to come over and start to fight with me, so I have to swim now. Once again, feel free to use the bubble to lift yourself up to one of the spiral abyss portal looking portals. And it should teleport us towards the trial islands. And here is the remaining teleportation waypoints that you can collect and just speak to the NPC that's in front of you. So make sure this is under night mode and that's also why I swapped to night mode earlier. Okay, now making sure that you have talked to the NPC and a, well, a trial will be presented to you. Uh, I do believe two of them are collecting these particles in the area and that then the trial should just be unlocked once you talk to them at the finishing line. There will be some really annoying enemies ahead of you. You probably already saw me fighting the Anemo Spectres right there. So I would recommend bringing some very strong party members because with the well, beginning team, it took me well over two minutes just to kill these Spectres and they are very, very annoying. Now, uh, once you reach this area on the map, this is a very complicated area with a lot of these gates and puzzles which is locked behind the doors, uh, you see one of those spirits which is locked behind the door. That Those other things we need to collect. I do believe there's a total of four in this area. Just follow where I'm going because then we'll also be requiring this day night changer at the center and using it a lot. But first of all, let's try to solve all the nightmare puzzles. Uh, Animo Traveler, uh, sorry, the Geo Traveler or any other characters that can give you extra height will be very, very useful. Zonli, Kazuha, etc. Here, you saw me interact with this. And now this side of the wall is opened and we're free to grab this, um, oh, it's called the flames. I just called them spirits earlier. Anyway, you're available to collect these flames and now we need to turn it into day mode in order to activate some of the other trials and some of the other puzzles. So down here, I do believe this is available for us to freely grab. I was quite confused after collecting these two. Uh, just watch where I'm going next. It should be quite easy. This next segment, I was a little bit confused about where I'm meant to go. Uh, but I saw that flame behind the gate and I knew I need to move that gate. Which means we need to go back up and change it into night mode again. Because one of the podiums was missing and you can only interact with them underneath night mode. After changing into night mode, let's go back to the same spot, interact with that uh, statue or podium or whatever you call it. And we will see, it should unlock the gate for us. Right here. Yeah. As we have done it correctly, and I was quite lost in this area for a while, so uh, what I recommend here is just to collect these two key sigils that's on the map currently. Uh, I was quite lost, I was being really blind, I couldn't find the last flame, but the last flame is literally should be right above my 
character right here i just didn't look up high enough so if you look up high enough you should be able to see the flame if you want to save your time right here right now but right now um on the screen because i'm being so dumb i missed out such a clear last flame i couldn't collect i decided to start collecting the key sigils there's the first key sigil and the second key sigil is behind us i'm just looking all around for the stupid flame but yeah just follow where i'm going let's fly over here to climb back up there's another cracked stone chest with mora come across this side slowly fall down that's your last key sigil on this current trial island going back to the center of where we were changing day and night you see what i mean now you just see that flame at the center spot once you get enough height with geo traveler or some other characters feel free to grab that last flame and that makes the end of the trials now just head towards the end talk to the same npc that was talking to you at the entrance can't miss out on the crystals and here the first trial is done i'm sorry for the very messy explaining ex explaining because um it's actually really hard to keep in track when you're just recording these things sometimes I'm really sorry once again um hopefully you were still able to do it regardless now we start to explore the center area of economia the biggest structure um in this area is also very very messy so to keep a close eye on where i'm going and i recommend you do what i do here which is climb all the way up to the top and uh, which allows you to place a portable waypoint and that also allows you to travel to all directions of this area very very easily as we'll be needing to grab a lot of key sigils in midair sometimes if you just don't have a character that allows you to gain extra heights like venti zongli and geo traveler then which means it will be very very annoying for you to collect the remaining key sigils right uh, you can't really proceed higher up uh, until much later so i just placed a waypoint right here and starting to glide off and follow where i'm going for the next key sigil right for those two key sigils feel free to teleport your way back up and use your height advantage once again to just travel around without enemies disturbing you uh, now we're, we're coming over is on top of this pillar this broken pillar that's your third key sigil in the area once again teleport your way back up by towards this direction drop down inside that was probably a little bit too fast uh, but you should be able to see this cracked area uh, underneath the structure you should be able to easily find an opening inside and grab that key sigil now head towards over here is a stone power you can break and down here is a key sigil and a normal chest here you'll be a few slimes need to defeat uh, once you Call defeat it. them this chest is yours but uh, to the right side you might find a hole do not get baited in to jump in because there's legit nothing down there other than pots even breaking all the pots there will be no rewards once again teleport your way back up and drop down towards this side and collect the key sigils on this end once again teleport because this next key sigil is quite high up here it is and then instantly turn towards this direction and start flying you'll see, see your next key sigil on this stone pillar which is not too high up you can easily collect that now teleport to this waypoint and turn around and you will see that key sigil but you will need some extra height once again Kazuha, Zongli, Venti it should all work grab a tall character just so they can grab it all done now we'll explore on the Evernight temple area here teleport to this teleportation waypoint and the easiest thing is to just look behind you and is on top of the structure here feel free to talk to this npc right here he will also ask you to do some uh, arrow shooting 
and allows you to get a easy achievement is one of the easiest shooting challenge I've ever seen as an archer character main this pretty much takes no skill all you have to do is shoot in the right direction and you'll get it anyway it's, it's pretty much no skill anyway then after you have done so talk to him once again then he allows you to collect this huge chest which is ultra worth it along with a achievement Here it is now turn your way towards this side once you finish and jump down you should really easily see this next key sigil let's go ahead and collect it okay now after you teleport your way back up to this teleportation waypoint feel free to head towards this direction and collect the next key sigil and this requires you to have a hydro character to hit all the podiums nearby to unlock the barrier for you having to tag here or if you're from the future use ayato i guess that should work teleport to the waypoint and immediately jump down in front of you this this segment will be very very fast because the uh, city is very annoying to follow just follow the city to its end locations and this should unlock the gate in front of you to open up to one of the longest economia quests uh economia world quests once again teleport but your way back up then drop down here to follow the city so it will unlock the gate for you and inside you will talk to this ghost i do believe uh she i don't believe it's a she she taking care of the kids in economia that's bound to become kings on thrones and stuff but she regret that these children were later on being sacrificed now to the right side down here if you just drop down is another key sigil and after collecting that we're going to teleport to the center teleportation waypoint of Elvernite temple and then in front of you towards the left side is an easy key sigil to collect and this area also contains one of the huge puzzles you will require all sorts of key sigils to unlock i do believe we don't have enough just yet so we continue to collect all the key sigils now keep going this direction you should see key sigils propped up uh, in front of you uh, we might have to interact with another world quest uh, just before we interact with this area because we're already missing uh it's my bad planning so just follow with me after you teleported to the center area of economia and follow where i'm going there will be this hidden door by this point of the map and enter it it seems like nothing is inside but you have to sit down on the stone area on the left uh on night time one of these ghost dudes will spawn this is one of the most surprising thing ever for economia and talk to him and he will tell you uh, his story and these few points that you will need to then go and interact with is all the same stone chair things that you have to sit on throughout the map there should be three locations you need to sit on the first once you teleport to the narrow this teleportation waypoint you need to head over to this archway where we earlier collected one of the key sigils in front of it will be one of these similar stone chairs you can sit down and then Paimon will start a dialogue and once you have done so you will know that has triggered correctly now once you can teleport your way back up to the Evernight temple middle teleportation waypoint and head towards the same direction over here and let's defeat this abyss mage and after that we collect the key sigil right next to him and here is another seat you can sit down at and after the Paimon finished her dialogue which means we have triggered correctly and it's just one more left for us now we head towards this direction and head for the next key sigil here you just have to slowly glide down and this next key sigil is yours now after you have got these two key sigil i've interacted with the chair feel free to uh, teleport your way to the middle teleportation waypoint once again and move your way towards the same direction but this time around drop down underneath these tree roots is another key sigil you need to connect and now what we teleport up to the top right sections of the Evernight temple area here is the next key sigil once you head towards this direction and it should be pretty easy to get we once again teleport to the center waypoint once again and now we would um, well head towards the trial islands one of the trial islands that we haven't completed and those two uh, key sigil on the trial island will be the final key sigils in this area and first of all we have to defeat the bishops to gain access to that precious chest after you have done so feel free to jump into the bubble and ascend upward towards the portal
Once you arrive on the trial island, don't forget to activate the teleportation waypoint and talk to the NPC. It's this trial should be somewhat similar to the last trial. All you have to do is run around the map. First of all, collect the first key sigil underneath that tree that shouldn't be hard to spot. Once you have moved to this location, there will be this um, pot thing that you have to interact with. Now the flame should spawn for you. But make sure you don't do what I did here. Extremely stupid. Do not try to climb up here. Yeah. About that. You either do not trigger the aggro of the Hydro Spectres, or you just take them out. Or you be fast on it. But yeah. All you have to do is once again collect all the flames in the area. Yep, and this is the second flame, um, but now we move towards the second key sigil on this area. It's quite the long climb, so be prepared of it. And there's also enemies, so if you want to skip them, like I do, be my guest, or just take them out. It's much easier. Now the last flame is right next to the tower here. Uh, I choose to climb my way through the side, but you can also move your way towards the center of the tower, then head for it. It's just nearby. It should be pretty easy to spot, and that's all four flames. After you talk to the NPC, it should be all good. Now let's go and finish off all the serpent's heart areas key sigils, and we'll teleport to this waypoint, and we'll move our way upward to the top of this tower here. Now we teleport to this waypoint. On this next segment, we'll be using this waypoint a lot. Now just follow me. Jump down here, and uh, here's your next key sigil. And once again, teleport our way back up and in towards our backside and here will be a key sigil on another one of these pillars but this time we also have a time trial next to it so all we have to do is activate that go to the top interact with the chest and we'll drop down to get the key sigil are you surprised we actually missed out this key sigil last time anyway we teleport once again back to the same teleportation waypoint head towards this side and glide off to grab our next key sigil now starting off by the um, serpent's heart chamber area and there will be a few that have missed out previously on the path you might have collected these you might have not but here is our next one now you want to head towards this direction and drop down over here be careful to not drop down too much or else you probably would have missed it now after you have teleported to this teleportation waypoint by the lower part of the main island of the serpent heart area you want to drop down here and get this key sigil immediately teleport your way back up again you might have realized that's also the portal to our final trial island but after you teleport it up you want to drop back downward and here's your next key sigil return to the last waypoint and then we head off from there then I do believe this has to be solved through a puzzle and we'll be collecting this key sigil around I defeated the abyss mage oh never mind I remembered but um, this I initially thought the key sigil is inside but we'll just do this for now because this puzzle we need to solve later on anyway so what you have to do, turn to day mode, activate with that once. Then we'll have to grab the daytime uh, energy instead of the nighttime energy and turn it into night mode. Now we can use the daytime mechanisms to interact with the gate. It's just a reverse of what we did last time. Pretty simple. Inside is this chest. I thought the key sigil was inside here, but apparently not. So uh, now I've realized it was in the chamber that's underneath us. So what we need to do here is teleport our way back downward here. Grab our next key sigil and head towards this direction to enter the chamber that we were in last time. Don't forget that stone chest there. Some mora, you know, some extra mora. I was slightly bit lost, but don't worry, we'll get our way there over there. Yeah, this next key sigil is down here, hidden very deep inside the lower chambers of the Serpent's Heart area. Very sorry for the confusion, but as long as you follow where I was going, everything should be fine. 
and here we are collecting some of the last key sigils that's on the island. All we have to do is teleport to the lowest half part of the Serpent Star area. These two key sigils are so obvious that I don't think you can miss them as long as you're in the general area for these two. And after defeating that Abyss Herald, this precious chest is opened up. Then we teleport to the portal teleportation waypoint earlier we were at and come down, same deal, defeat the bishops and take the precious chest. Oh boy, you know, things has been kind of repetitive, hasn't it? But after you have done so, uh, prepare yourself for the next trial. The next trial is combat based, so be prepared with food, uh, with a strong team and all that. Now we're finally unlocking the final teleportation waypoint in Economia. First of all, congratulations. We are one step closer to 100% achievements for this region. Here, one more key sigil and let's move our way over here and head our way towards the last key sigil of Economia. After you have done so, if you have followed me correctly, every single key sigil so far will be collected. And now let's proceed onward with the trial. Now all the trials are completed once you have collected all of these flames once again which is all on top of these statues. Once you've done so, go towards the final tower and it will be lit up and other achievements gained. And now feel free to go back to the Serpent's Heart area and talk to the NPC that where we all began this. Oh my, it has been a long journey hasn't it? But once you have done so, talk to this guy and he will reveal a lot of secrets about Economia. If you are interested in the story, feel free to read on. Now we can officially start to collect all our chests and everything in Economia. So um, let's begin. Right, first of all, teleported to the narrow here. We need to change our day night cycle for that other puzzle. But since already under night time, we can come around here, go to the back side and start continuing to collect that chest. Teleport over here and use this day night changer as I mentioned earlier, one of the closest to teleportation waypoint. Then teleport your way back down, interact with this. This side of the gate should now be opened. I'm very sorry I didn't create a chest map this time around because it was a tremendous amount of effort because Economia has so much chest and they have so many layers of map designs it would be very very complicated if I just show you the chest map alone then it would be very very annoying but as you're seeing I just followed the city to this spot and that's your next chest after you have done so coming back to the same spot where you change the day and night cycle and after you change it into night time, we teleport to the same teleportation waypoint, but this time around we move backward around. There is a ruined uh, little area right here. Chest inside here. This can be only interacted with underneath night time. And now, remember that quest? We talked to the lady. Um, that is just a huge long story quest and we need to offer all these sangopoles to these weird stone tablets all around the areas. Don't say I didn't remind you to grab some sangopoles because that's exactly the first thing I mentioned when we entered the Economia. Right, for the hour, our journey of collecting chests will be going through these areas and offering them sangopoles as well. So we're pretty much multitasking throughout the entire way of doing the entire exploration. Now let's teleport back to here. 
And then let's move our way towards here. You don't really have to defeat this ring guard because he gives us no rewards at all. But come here, follow this silly all the way. Then once you have done so, coming over to here, these enemies right here are guarding a chest. You need to defeat them in order to unlock this chest. Now we will begin to speed up a little bit because there's so many chairs, so many things to do. So if you think this is too fast for you, you can slow down the playback. Now we need to insert key sigils for this puzzle right here underneath night mode only. The other two can only be inserted underneath day mode. That's why we teleport over and change the daytime. We climb up the side of the hill, the enemy you saw earlier, the Pyro Abyss Mages and the Halo Ghosts. Defeat them, chest is yours. Since we're now in daytime, we are free to insert the other two key sigils right here. And this should give you a exquisite chest. Once again, I do want to mention if the next segment, since I decided to significantly speed up, if this has some issues for you, if you do not like to react to really fast moving, moving, uh, sorry, moving images, uh, you can decide to slow down. And in front of us, that enemy camp, defeat the enemies, chest, same deal, teleport your way back to the center teleportation waypoint. Behind us is a Sango Pearl, Sango Pearl offerings location. And you know how you can always just pin the mission on your quest list so when eventually you're nearby one of these, you won't miss out. Behind us is this cracked stone chest with a halo chill. And then we look towards the other direction. Hydro Abyss Mage should be pretty easy. Go down, defeat them, and that locked chest is ours. And then now let's proceed. Let's aim towards this direction. And we drop right down, enemies right here, defeat them, then that's your chest. Like I said once again, if it's too fast for you to follow, uh, feel free to change the playback speed a little bit. I'm sorry, this might become uh, inconvenient, but uh, because there's so many chests in Economium, I have decided to speed up this a little bit. Now, once again, after those two chests, those two enemy guarded chests, center waypoint, once again, drop down, right below us is the city. The city is just quite far to follow. Here it is. Finish that off, and now we are off to teleport to here once again. Now we want to aim towards our backside. You should see this huge enemy guarding chests and defeat them. Chest is ours. And then now we want to aim towards this direction. So it should be pretty easy to follow. Pretty simple. Follow it all the way towards the top only for a common chest not really worth it but still it contributes to our exploration teleport to the waypoint stone chest come over here this is a city once again follow the city all the way back up to where we came from the teleportation waypoint location now head towards this direction Pay attention here on our right side of the enemies. There are two campsites of enemies we're clearing here. One by the tower, this chest should unlock. But also here towards the left side, there was one of these sigil challenges, which we will do later. But uh, right now we will not. Because we will need to enter night mode in order to interact with NPCs and stuffs. So we teleport to the narrows first teleportation waypoint, come back here, will be three room guards guarding this, um, well, exquisite chest. Be prepared for this combat because of course the room guards is not a joke. And then right after to our left side, you probably have collected this chest already, um, which is Hillichels, Hillichels guarding chests. Now we'll climb up this wall to our left side, but before that we need to touch to the sillies just to make it progress, making sure it's going towards its own direction, we don't have to worry about it resetting. As long as you don't use the teleportation waypoint, the silly should be keep going towards its destination. Here over here is enemies, defeat them, you can already clearly see that locked chest there. After you have done so, collect the chest, and like I mentioned earlier, we need to climb up on the wall to the left side. There is a time trial 
on top of this area here. So all you have to do is get over there, initiate this, and it's one of those really easy electrical particles uh, time trials. After you have done so, just pay attention to your right side. You should be able to see the city just waiting for you on the bridge side. Once again, follow it to its destination and this chest will be yours in front of us right here and regarding chest this well defeat them and then there's your chest and up here another silly I really do question why would they put so many silly in this area but here it is another silly follow it to its destination you probably already saw on the wall over there it's one of the required to own be in daytime to interact with um, the key sigils. We'll go back for that later, but right now we we'll teleport to the center waypoint and drop down towards this side here. This is one of the three trials on the islands that links to another world quest that requires you to have key sigils to unlock them. This is also another reason why we prioritize on key sigil. It'd be awkward if you don't have one of them and cannot proceed with this quest. This is also one of the hardest combat and DPS checks in Economia. With this, with my team, I tried over about probably 20 minutes and it's one of the most frustrating things I have tried to do with this no wishing account. So be prepared for us for this and prepare a strong team to do this trial because you need to defeat all the bishops within 30 seconds so good luck once you have done so talk to the guy once again remember you can only do this underneath night time and i'm really sorry if that extreme fast forward uh, made you feel ill uh, once again i apologize for that anyway let's proceed once you have done so we need to change our time into daytime just because i mentioned earlier we need daytime in order to insert one of the key sigils. Now underneath day mode, after you're coming from this teleportation waypoint, this should be clear to you these two key sigil locations and this is the last chest in the narrows. If you have followed up so far, congratulations. Now we're about to do the center locations of Enconomia. Now first of all, after we teleport here, is to change it into night time at the main control, uh, main controller at the center. Then we teleport our way backward, and then aim towards our left side and start heading downward. You should have already seen this enemy camp. All you have to do is defeat them, and this chest is yours. Uh, this area is quite complex, so please pay attention for where I'm going. Now heading onward towards this direction. Underneath the chamber here is two wing guards guarding this chest. Defeat them, use your pyro element to re uh, interact with this. A hidden room will open up. Inside is one of the world quests we need to do, uh, which is linked to the super hard enemy trial earlier. But we need to do all three of them. Uh, I do believe the remaining two should be easier because the hardest we have already done so. Now follow where I'm gliding. Down here we need to insert key sigils right here. You can ignore the Abyss Herald if you do wish so, but if it's easier for you to defeat him, and be my guess as well. But after you have inserted all five key sigils, there is your precious chest. Now head your way towards the teleportation waypoint towards the north side. I just climbed up to, well, get rid of the aggro on the Abyss Herald, but near to the teleportation waypoint is, these enemy, uh, is this enemy guarded chest. And walking down this side towards the staircase, you should see the silly and just follow it. You know the drill, just follow it to the end because this one is also very very annoying, just be patient now. We have an even more annoying silly ahead of us. But now keep heading towards this direction, you might already seen this lock chest guarded by rune guards once again. I don't know what's up with Enconomia and rune guards, there's just so many of them. Now, by the hallway to the left side is one of the most annoying cities to follow in the entire Enconomia, so be patient right now, just follow this. Once you follow it to the end, collect it and immediately just teleport your way to the center waypoint because I couldn't be bothered to deal with the Abyss Herald. That is my solution to it. Now we go towards the right side of the teleportation waypoint. Once again, enemy guarding chest, defeat them and head even more towards the right side. And down here, you might have already done this area, but uh, down here, if you remember this area where we were solving riddles, 
is another enemy guarded chest and keep falling down towards this direction even more enemy guarding chests yes there is just so many enemies in economia i wouldn't be surprised if someone already done a farming path for economia enemies just because they're so packed once again here is a sangopo uh, offering location which you can do then once you have done so and let's just jump off towards this direction and be sure you do not glide down too much uh, inside here is a hidden room with enemies and after defeating them this chest is yours then we teleport to this waypoint very important this particular waypoint now look at towards your right side and regarding chests defeat them chest is yours now we move upward back to the main teleportation waypoint once again and let's head back side towards here remember this day night changer now we need to change it into daytime drop down this chest once you get close enough uh, enemies will spawn defeat them this chest is yours now once you have teleported this waypoint you should have already seen on the left side is enemy guarding chest in the meantime i just did a quick progress check on our chests and now after collecting this chest you're probably already seeing we head up to the stairs on our left side is a shooting challenge grab your favorite archer uh, no pressures on this the time limit is so much on this tell me you couldn't finish this shooting challenge it give you a whole one minute to complete now once you have done so collect this exquisite chest and right in front of you is one of those hydro monuments or whatever you call those podiums you have to interact with well you know barbara to tag me yeah, both very very recommended now behind us towards the back side here towards the right side here you should see enemy guarding this chest i accidentally blocked my chest underneath the geo traveler's boulder don't do these beginner level mistakes but now we head towards the back side over here we drop down right here drop down where i'm dropping down then you should see these two abyss mages guarding this chest clear them out and that chest is yours turn back around and another shooting challenge behind us on this direction this challenge now you need to be a little bit careful it's 30 seconds but it shouldn't be too difficult now once again you should already seeing these enemies just over here guarding chest clear them out and this chest is ours yes our chest Come over here once again enemy guarding chest over here defeat them and don't go anywhere else yet come over here deeper inside the cave another two key sigil locations that you can insert underneath day mode now once you have done so we drop down over here you should see silly over here that we need to follow you might have already done this if you did this on the way uh, during our main story quests but here it is now we teleport our way back up to this teleportation waypoint coming from here we head towards this side here first of all you'll see enemies guarding chest and these few boxes hiding a hidden entrance clear out the enemies and Clear out these boxes, then drop down. It doesn't matter daytime or nighttime, there will be two podiums you need to interact with. So do the, these two first, or the other two, then you can change your time and go back down for the final one. Once you have done so, another chest should unlock for you. Let's check. Yes, I wasn't wrong about that. Climb back up, and now we drop down towards... The, oh, before that, I've got a chest. So let's just use the portable waypoint we used earlier. Drop down. Here. Enemy guarding this chest. I forgot to plan this part of earlier. But now we once again fly towards this direction and we drop down. Enemies guarding chest over here. And now you remember that one silly I forgot to collect. Yes, it's almost time for us to collect that, but we'll sort that out later it's my mistake this area's route is very very hard to plan so i'm really sorry for this very bad route planning 
But after finishing this city, we need to gain a little bit more altitude in order to fly over. So let's climb back up a little bit. Oh, and down here, if you have defeated these Abyss Mages right next to this teleportation waypoint, then that chest you should have already got. Now we follow this city, and I mentioned this earlier as well, you could have already got this during our first quest. Do not worry about those two healer shells in the cave, there is no chest inside, do not worry about it. Let's teleport our way back to this teleportation waypoint and find a higher spot just so we can climb up high enough to glide over to get that one missing city. Over here you need as much height as possible because it will fly back towards the mainland. Once again, just make sure you saved up enough stamina, use a character that has a gliding technique, then that should be pretty easy. After that chest, let's just teleport here and we need to change it into daytime. Okay, once you have changed into daytime, once again we teleport to, well, let's just use the portable waypoint, it should be easier for us. Follow carefully where I'm going now, because once again this is sped up, so be careful. And right down here, let's glide closely inside here towards the cave. These two key sigil locations took me forever, this is actually the last of the last key sigil locations I recorded, so don't worry if you think uh, I just used up all my key sigils, no we haven't. Don't worry about it. Now we teleport down to the Evernight Temple area. Since this area is also extremely messy, so just pay attention to where I'm going. If you really need it, do slow down on the playback. Once again, don't worry about it. Okay, now we teleported to the center of the Evernight Temple. Now we first will do the trials once again. Right down here is one of these locations you need to insert all the key sigils in order to talk to the guy. Make sure you're underneath night mode, okay? I repeat, night mode is important or else the NPC will not spawn. Once you've done so, talk to him and you initiate the trial. This one should be easier than your last one. Once you've done so, precious chest. And another mission item is gained inside and that is two out of three we need in order to complete the mission. Now we head towards the center. Once again, behind here, night mode only. Three abyss mages, clear them out, and open this chest, and it will be a silly coming out of the chest, which leads us towards the center. There is a luxurious chest locked by these three silly podiums. So now our quest is to collect these sillies from different locations nearby. Now, and that's one. Let's teleport our way back to the center once again. Grab your Electro character. Pay attention to the spears that are on the floor. They represent the sequence. That's the first one. And we'll go for the second one. Let's try to check which one's the second one. This is the second one. Here's the third one. Fourth one. Fifth one. Is the final one over here. You can ignore the enemies or clear them out, but I just cannot be bothered because these rift hounds are really annoying. Right, after that, all you have to do is just to walk towards this direction. Up here, I do believe, if you drop down, there's a chest just floating on one of these pillars. Floating? I mean, oh, the chest is on top of the floating pillars. You see, been recording voice lines for way too long. Anyway, coming over here, collect the particles for the time trial. This one is a little bit strict on time, so prepare yourself for enough stamina and a good route planning. At the end is your chest for it, and we teleport our way back up here. Now, on the right side is three rune guards, well, technically rune two, two rune guards, one rune greater guarding this precious chest. And after you clear them out, drop down right here, two key sigils inserting required. Or the three actually. Let's check. Yes, three. You need to put three key sigils inside and chest will spawn for you. Once you have done so, this area's chest is pretty much all cleared out because we have already done the story quest for it. Now we'll just glide over here. You should already see these enemies guarding this chest. Clear them out, and that chest is yours. 
Teleport once again to the center of the Evernight Temple. Now we'll head towards the left side. Since we're already done most stuff, now we're just chasing after the sillies. And here, do you remember these two, these three enemies that earlier we didn't clear out when we we're collecting sigils? Clear them out and open up that chest. Then follow towards the left side right here. It took me a little bit of time to figure it out. Left side on top of here is a chest. Prepare yourself because there's a huge rift hound spawning right here. Uh, this took me long enough to defeat them. And then that chest is yours. Once you have done so, come up here. Three key sigils, I do believe. And open up this exquisite chest. And another city will spawn for you that will head towards the luxurious chest. Follow me to its destination. Right, and then we go back towards the same direction we were going for. Prepare Barbara because it's the one one of those hydropodium puzzles once again. Here, then collect the particles, as simple as that. Now I do believe we need to drop down um, somewhere. Let's check. Yeah, let's plan the route and try to find the last city first for the chest. Over here by this very very hidden spot you could see this chest just standing here once you get close enough these three animo specters will spawn and up to defeat them this chest should unlock for you and the last city should be unlocked now all you have to do is follow the city back to the luxurious chest area and the chest is now yours Personally, I think that was worth it. It's only three cities along with other three chests. Now drop down over here on the lower area and start following this city towards its end goal. Now after teleporting to that waypoint and now let's head forward, you should be able to see the city right in front of you. After uh, you have triggered the first response of the city, just leave it be and we'll proceed forward inward to take out this enemy guarded chest, uh, take out the enemies and that chest is yours. Just a quick heads up, this area will be very very messy, so please keep a close attention of where we're going constantly and also this city by its end location towards the right side is another uh, serpent's heart. Uh, chamber pattern that you can record. I left it at a later half of the video, but you want to activate it now and You can do so now. Let's teleport to the bottom half of the Evernight temple right in front of the teleportation waypoint You might have already seen this before it is this Hydro Abyss Mage with these three sigil locations that you need to use in order to unlock this chest for you You don't even have to defeat them uh, All you have to do is unlock with the key sigils now. Let's head towards the south side of the map and drop down you should see these two ring guards locations initially i thought it was only one so i only taken out one so the other chest didn't uh, unlock for me so but keep heading towards that direction clear out the enemy uh we opened up that chest but we once again teleport back to the waypoint just so we can get a easier way down to defeat the other ring guard that was not active now after defeating the enemy there is a nearby puzzle to solve just follow what i do here Yeah, you will want to have a daytime, and then making sure that you can interact with that mechanism on the daytime. We need the daytime energy, just grab the energy and change it into night mode in order for us to active, activate the mechanism. So, hence we get the precious chest. Now teleport our way back to the waypoint and we drop down in front of us towards this direction. You can already see those two lock chests in front of us. I will be going for that later. But drop down here should be three rune sentinels. Uh, after defeating them, this normal chest is yours. And we will head towards this direction in order to do the remaining puzzles and the challenges over there. First of all, we do this time trial. Uh, same deal, collect particles, not too hard. Just follow the particles and by the end of it, you will get your chest. Please do prepare enough energy, don't be like me, but either way you should have plenty of time to complete this. But also another thing I forgot to mention is I forgot to offer the Sango Pearl near down by the top half region of the Evernight Temple. Just tap over here, let's offer the Sango Pearl and we'll be all good. 
Now only three more, I do believe. Yeah, we're gonna have three more locations we need to offer the Sango Pearls. But once again, teleport to this location. And let's head towards this direction. Dropping down here, keep gliding. Of course, ring guards. Ring guards guarding this chest. Same deal. Same deal, clear them out. Chest is yours. Right down here is the Sango Pearls offering location. We have been here once, but we didn't have the quest unlocked by the time. But here it is. Okay, now we only have two more locations we need to offer Sango Pearls. But first of all, let's finish collecting all the chests in this region once again. We drop down over here. You should see this huge area. First of all, is this time trial in front of you. Once again, collecting particles, nothing hard here. Just follow it towards the end. And the chest is yours. Now we'll proceed to unlock this. It seems complicated, but it's actually not too hard. Just follow what I do here. So our final objective objective is to get inside and open up the gates inside uh, underneath night mode. But of course night mode will not be able to use the barrier. So we need to grab the energy and interact with this underneath day mode. After you have swapped into day mode, return to the same location and use your newly gained night mode energy to get inside and swap to night mode inside with the mechanism. So now we can interact with the gate underneath night mode and be inside the barrier. And once you have done so, the chest is yours, the barrier should disappear and all is well. Now let's proceed to grab the chests so from where we just unlock the things, we want to drop down aiming towards this direction, you will see a hole and dropping down you will see enemies guarding this chest, exquisite chest and follow where I'm going next because we will need a pyro archer drop down to, towards the side here, you see these hanging lanterns or whatever you call them hit them with pyro shots and then a chest will unlock for us down here grabbing this chest then we will need to teleport your way upward to this teleportation waypoint once again yes I know we be, do be doing a lot of teleportations and coming over here we need to slowly drop down in order to come over here to unlock this gate once again we need to grab the nighttime energy enter date mode drop down interact with this and very unfortunately, I do believe I locked myself inside here, so we just have to teleport out once again to the same waypoint. And it actually saves us time. We just glide over to this side to the locked chests. Now, this chest is locked by two sillies, we, which we need to get. Uh, which ones? One is to the right, one is to the left. And I do believe they're guarded by enemies, and one of them is a day night cycle changer that you need to unlock with. Nothing too hard here, you defeat the enemies here, and you get an extra chest here, and just keep following the silly to its final location, which is one of the podiums to unlock this exquisite chest. Coming over towards the left side, you'll see this barrier locking the silly inside, and all you have to do is come to the right side, change it into night time, and follow it. You don't have to deal with the rift hounds, uh, just follow the silly to, towards its finishing line. And that chest is yours. Now we teleport once again back to the teleportation waypoint and head downward over here. Inside here is two sigil locations that you can interact with. Insert the sigils and get a chest. Now let's offer some of the final Sango pearls that we didn't offer, didn't have time to offer. One is behind here, this is nearby the serpent's heart area. But before that, here is the final sitting location sitting stone and once you have set down all three locations has been done Paimon will finish her last dialogue and that's all good but we teleport to this location and we'll unlock with key sigils first of all get a chest and now we head backward down here let's look for chests right here this puzzle is also really easy just follow what I do here turn to day mode and that chest can be interacted underneath the night mode, which means we just need to shift this door aiming towards this direction, but we need to make sure we grab the daytime energy and keep shifting the door towards the right location before you decide to swap back to night mode. And what we need to do in the end is keep hitting this. 
right just focus on which direction it is aimed at it's directly opposite of where the chest is the opening side and then we switched into night mode we go around use the energy we have gained underneath day mode interact with the mechanism in the center just so we can rotate it during night mode not too hard is it all we have to do is just rotate inward and grab the chest once again after you have grabbed the chest um, the barriers should open for you so you don't have to worry about anything now I just teleported up to the same waypoint and glide off to reach that silly over towards the right side you probably already see the next two objectives on the screen already because it's pretty obvious the two enemy guarded chests nearby as well so all you have to do first of all is follow the silly towards its end grab the chest then enemies right in front of you clear them out and the chest is yours all right once you have defeated the enemies now we head towards the next enemy campsite the same deal defeat the enemies open up the chest and let's teleport once you teleported to the serpent's heart teleportation waypoint right beneath us is a sigil uh, insert location you insert two sigils underneath night mode and then there's one more we need to do under daytime we'll be swapping to daytime later so don't worry about it but right now we head towards this direction i'm aiming at and towards the sango pearl offering location but he's a, a bit lector be prepared for this fight uh, it's an electro lector once you have finished it offer your pearl do not do what i did here i just tried to pick up the material but just kept interacting with the stone tablet but here it is once you finish this we're gonna have one location left along here is a precious chest it do be really awkward when you're trying to record these things and you just kept messing up but i guess everyone makes mistakes eh now turn around Towards your right side, you probably already see a locked chest with enemy guarding it. And on the left side here, from where you can see from the waypoint, is another puzzle we'll be solving in a second. But all, we take out of the enemies over here, claim the chest, then now we're heading off to another sigil insert location. Just follow closely of where I'm going right here. Right over here is two sigil insert locations, only do this available in night mode once you've done so that chest is yours and feel free to glide off towards the pillar over there there's a shooting challenge on top of the pillar so be prepared of this this one is actually quite annoying to do because the shooting angle will limit you only able to shoot some of them when you're on the ground floor so just be aware of it but of course if you have gun you never mind just forget what i said because that pretty much is probably one of your easiest uh, challenges ever right now that chest is collected feel free to teleport to the next waypoint towards that direction nearby here is a few puzzles we can solve just follow what i do here first of all we interact with this and the first layer of the barrier should be unlocked and all we have to do is change the day mode now but before that, he's a rune guard, a oh, rune hunter actually, guarding here. All you have to do, defeat it. As easy as that. Hmm, I do need to build my Barra, which is another thing. Did not change it on top of the structure. Now we just drop down. This chest is ours, and teleport back up once again. Yeah. Okay. Here. Behind us is a time trial, which is once again, particle chasing. Pretty simple. After this, uh, it's pretty simple. So I'll just collect this chest. We'll teleport back to the Serpent's Heart area. Um, and since we have just switched to daytime, we can interact with that sigil I mentioned earlier and unlocks another chest for us. After this, we'll go towards the right side and start collecting some of the chests we missed. Uh, during this huge road that leads up to this area as long as soon as you drop down here destroy the rune guard and one chest will be open for you and another bunch of rune sentinels here guarding another chest never feel ashamed of using food because for me this has been a nightmare uh, actually defeating these enemies i just never have enough damage here following the path you'll see a silly just by the side of the road just follow its uh, just follow it to its 
finishing line, finishing location, whatever you call it. Um, and once again, teleport your way upward. And now since we need night mode, the closest night changer is inside the puzzle, if you remember this location. Once you have changed into night mode, you can feel free to teleport your way back up. And let's head to the center of this. This is one of the most simple puzzles we've seen. Just enter in night mode and come in and swap to day mode and the chest is yours. Pretty simple. But so far, congratulations, you probably... On the map, it will already tell you it's 100%, but I clearly know there is probably like 20 or 30 or so chests we haven't collected. Here it is, luxurious chest, and you have gained another achievement. Yeah, please don't be fooled by the achievement. Sometimes they may not represent 100% of the chest that's available. Following that silly all the way to here, you will gain another chest. Okay, once again, didn't I mention Serpent's Heart area is one of the most complicated areas? But first, we'll teleport here. Right beneath us is this huge enemy. Take him out. Underneath the room ben uh, behind him is the chest we need. And right now, we head towards the right side. This is the last trial we need to complete. And you can only do this underneath night mode. And just to remind you of that, now we need to do that underneath night mode. But for now, Let's well. Let's proceed. Clearing out some of the enemies nearby. Clearing out the two abyss mages. This chest is yours. And now we will go towards this direction. And you may see that we can offer the last sango pearl near the area. But first, we'll let's turn into night mode in order for us to proceed with the trials. It is. Prepare your best team once again. I would recommend so, at least damage wise. Here it is. Just put all of the key sigils in and talk to the same guy once again. And just finish off with his trial. Out of all the three trials, I do believe this one is the most simple one. It has a long time limit and as long as you have a Nemo character, this should be a walk in the park. Once you have done so, let's teleport our way back here. And as soon as you teleport here, you should see main two objectives on the screen right here. One is the enemy guarding chest here. One is the silly behind us right here. Right above us. This is one of two cities to unlock another chest, which is weird how they started to do these scenarios of where two cities unlock a single chest. But once you have followed the first one to its location, don't be confused about it because there's another one you need to collect. It's right over here towards the right side. Yep, just follow it to its final location. Another chest you unlock for us. There it is. There is another key sigil location I do believe you need to interact with underneath daytime, but we'll come back for that later. It should be right here, this key sigil location. But in front of us is this enemy guarded chest. Defeat the enemies. Chest is ours. And now let's keep moving upward. It's a cracked stone chest for more Mora. And then here, some enemies just clear them out for the extra money. Drop down, here is a time trial, once again following the particles, pretty simple. Okay, now I think it's time for me to finish off with my last uh, Sango Pearl offerings. But before that, we do need to change it into daytime, because we'll have that key schedule thing we need to interact with. Alright. I don't think anyone is saying enough to count how many times from the swap the day night cycle. Either way, feel free to teleport back to this location and let's head off to actually insert our key sigil first. Over here, just by the ledge, three key sigils locations. Once you've done so, exquisite chest can be opened up. And now here to our right side, you probably already saw this city, just follow it. Follow it, to, follow it to its final location. Of course, you already know, we'll get another chest for that. 
Okay, now since there is a few things we can only interact with underneath Night Road, let's just head towards this direction to finish off the next enemy guarded campsite. Over here after you defeat the enemies, that chest is yours. And let's teleport our way back. And then interact with this once again, turning into night mode. Here it is, let's head towards the right side. There should be these four hydro monuments or podiums that's really easy to spot underneath night mode. Interact with them and that's it. Prepare yourself for another electro uh, lector and here defeat him will get another chest and the last, for real, the last uh, Sango Pro offering location. Now let's drop down over here and then you should see the city just by on top of the tree. Follow it to its final location. Then we'll get another chest right here. You don't have to defeat the Whopper Flowers, they're not important. Once you are in here, it should be a familiar sight. Climb up this wall and to the right side is this key sigil inserting location. And once you insert all four key sigils, then you can head inside. Now once you have done so, there is a puzzle just down here to the left and you will see those two locked up gates, you can actually interact with them to allow you to exit through other areas. You don't have to do day night change here, all you have to do is defeat the bishops and the chest should be unlocked for you, there's no need. Feel free to open up these gates just so it's easier, but here we want to head this way upward and there's a city right here, hiding right here, we just follow it to its final location here. Now we'll have to teleport back up soon enough. But before doing that, we need to insert the key sigil here underneath night mode because the remaining ones is underneath daytime. Once again, switch it back to daytime and we go back to the location of the where we inserted the key sigils just so we can finish that puzzle. Here it is. And that's there. Another chest completed. Right, only have a few left, but those two should be, those two remaining key sigils should be already done in the previous clip, so do not worry about it. If you have followed all the way up to here, uh, you should only have a few chests that's remained that's quite special um, on the map. First of all is here. If Remember the patterns I told you to record, uh, these patterns then can be in, entered in the Serpent's Heart Chamber once again. And before doing that, since we already collected all the trials, um, all the key sigil trials, uh, key items, now we can come into the hidden room and interact with this NPC over here. I'll just skip his dialogues for you. And once you have finished talking to him, this little gateway should open for you. Then all you have to do is well you have to finish his mission and insert all those three trial items then this platform above you should open up then you can actually teleport your way upward with this little gateway thing that now has spawned and this will get you a new achievement for it and now just speed up this process once you have done so you still need to talk to him to gain another key item in order for us to finish the Sango Pearl offering mission. It's very important you finish this mission before you finish the Sango Pearl uh, uh, offering mission. Now we're just searching for the remaining patterns and we have already done so. Remember how we have sat down on those three locations uh, of the stone chair. And now we'll just head over towards this location over here. If you still remember the hidden room over here. I just try to find it. Yep, this hidden room right here. I'm sorry if the map is a little bit small here. Inside, once again, talk to him. Well, you have to get out of combat first. Talk to him again. Then you'll get a huge chest just because we went to different locations and sat down on three separate stones. How is that? Now we teleport our way back to the Serpent's Heart area underneath night mode, drop down 
to this direction, you'll see this floating lantern thing, spirit lantern thing. Then on top of it, it's a silly that you can follow. After you have done so, come across to here, defeat these two rune sentinels, and another chest is yours. Okay, now let's actually actually chase down the final of the final chests and mission quest line that's still available since we have finished the uh, Aberaku or the pretty much the top of the tower mission. Now we've got the key mission item. Now we can come over here and talk to the lady once again uh, down here. Once you have done so, just walk on this, um, well, transparent path. Once you reach the end, this platform will spawn for you. And then all you have to do is once again talk to the NPC and give her the item she, she is seeking for, which is the item we just gained on the top of the tower. As simple as that. Once we give her the item, then everything will be all good. And she released all the spirits of the children we were talking about earlier. And this also links to a whole new story quest um oh yeah i do believe we'll have to interact with all yeah we'll have to interact with all the children's spirits in order to gain another achievement here i do believe there is one uh, achievement i missed out on this account which i do not have footage for uh, which you will have to complete a previous uh in a zoom up quest to unlock that i will try to post that in a separate separate video because this video is already way too long way over two hours i'm already tired enough just voicing over this Here it is one of the first children's climbing up to that chamber and interact with him out of i do believe seven just follow where i'm going to interact with all these uh, children's and their spirits Yeah, some of them are, have really cheeky locations, so you have to follow quite carefully where I'm going. That is the third location. Uh, I skipped all the dialogues because uh, I don't think it's worth looking into, uh, but it might be important to you. So you can spend your time and look through and look for story details, be my guest. But now you want to well, fly slowly towards this area, and here is your next and now we we'll once again teleport to this waypoint because I kept making mistakes. Just follow where I'm going next. If you remember behind one of the key sigil locations that we have inserted. Uh, keep going towards this direction. Yep. Here it is. Um, after that, you want to jump right down over here. Interact with these two. Just by the corner here. And you should get your achievements and that should be it i'm very sorry if this seemed very messy at the end because i'm literally running out of my energy i'm really sorry this is the case now it's just fixing the two locations i've missed out which is the patterns that allows you to interact with the uh, serpent's heart chamber puzzle and all you have to do is drop down this side as long as you have finished this puzzle before you come inside on the wall is the first pattern you need to interact with and once again take a picture of it go back to serpent's heart and interact with it this should give you a luxurious chest once you defeat the rune guards that spawned out of uh, do you believe the serpent's heart chamber Once you have reached this area, now let's start with progress. <laughs> you see, I literally can't talk now. Let's proceed with the patterns. Just be careful which one I'm going first and second. I'm not sure if the pattern sequence can be different, but I don't think they should be. And just follow where I'm going, which one I'm doing, and then this should be all good. Or just follow your own sequence that you have taken the pictures of. These Three ring guards should spawn, now just take them down, and after that is your luxurious chest. And 
After that, I did mention another one I missed out, which is near the Evernight Temple area. Once you come from this teleportation waypoint, you see this little cave in between here and the trial uh, area. Just keep going forward. So here on the left side of the wall, it should be the pattern hidden really, really at a sneaky location. And once again, take a picture of this and go back and insert the pattern. And that is the last of the last of the chest I could find for Ankonomia. And once again, congratulations if you were able to reach this point. Well, I don't know what, what else I can say. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope this is, was helpful. I know it has gone through so much delays and everything. Um, both me mentally preparing for this and me cutting out and redoing the voicing at least two or three times because I'm just not happy with how I'm explaining these for you. But yeah. Hopefully this has been helpful to you and hopefully this was able to, well, probably give you just enough time in order to get some more Primo Gems for the next version, for Yamiko, for whatever you're pulling for. Good luck on the next banners and I'll see you guys when I'm needed for the next collection guide once again. And well, in the meantime, I need to st stop being lazy and try to go back and patch the other exploration guides and I'll see you guys there. Thank you so much for watching once again. Uh, if you liked the video, uh, leave a like, leave a subscribe button, and let me know if you have any questions for me. Leave your comment down in the Q&A sections, and I'll try to do that on a different episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys later on the streams.